Hello everyone, today I have reached Exalted with the Shatari Skyguard and the main reason you or most people want to get Exalted with this faction even in Wrath of the Lich King is of course the awesome Nether Ray mounts. There are five variations of uh, this mount's colors. Uh, there is green, uh, blue, red, purple and Steve and it's actually surprisingly fast to reach Exalted with this faction you can do it in only one day um, if you're a new player and you've never done this it would probably take like 10 to 12 hours of concentrated effort of farming and the reason why you can get exalted so quickly is because you can farm mobs uh, there are daily quests that you can only do once a day but there are also quests that can be repeated indefinitely uh, you can farm bosses mini bosses small bobs you can hand in quests and these all give you reputation. There is uh, the next little video section is going to go over the Wowhead uh, Shatari Skyguard Rep Guide. Make sure to do the uh, first quest that you pick up in Shatraf City. And then if you want to join a group that does the farming, make sure you have the more shadow dusts done. Um, in fact, that whole first section until Terok's downfall is uh, good to get. Um, because you need the shadow dust to see a lot of enemies and uh, if you need for your group you can summon Tarok. Uh, once you've done this quest chain you can there are some parts that you can again hand in indefinitely like the shadow dust quest uh, can be handed in as many times as you want um, and it gives 150 rep which is pretty nice um, Tarok's downfall cannot be handed in indefinitely but the quest to get the item that summons Tarok can. Before you get to this point you need to do these bullshit little daily quests like this uh, blow up the spider eggs that are actually bird eggs quest. Um, just knock these out quickly. It only takes like 10 minutes. And um, if you go back to the wowhead section uh, there are some Ogrilla quests in the Blades Edge Mountains, but I highly recommend against doing those. Those are really, really slow. It's probably just much, much faster to farm these, even if you are farming alone. Um, this is the little buff, 40 minutes uh, left on that uh, shadow buff. Uh, these shadow figures, you can only see them with that buff on. You need to hand in the Shadow Dust quest. Uh, don't worry. 20 minutes is more than enough time. It's, it's, very, uh, it's a very generous amount of time that this buff gives. And by the end of this uh, exalted um, little fiasco, you're going to have like two stacks of this uh, potion. Um, not ev It's not a 100% chance. You need uh, six dusts to get one potion to hand it in at the quest giver. It's not 100%, but again, you're going to form like hundreds and possibly even thousands of these mobs. Um, anyways... Um, with the dust, the reason why it's important to uh, apply this uh, shadow dust is in these little tree houses. Normally, there's only one um, humanoid mob, but uh, with the dust, you can see like six or five or six mobs, and most of them are these undead, shadowy figures that you can't see otherwise. Basically, the way you reach Exalted is you farm these little mobs. Uh, that drop obviously the shadow dust and you can hand those in to see more mobs sure but they also drop these pages and uh, once you collect 10 page you can go over a skull pile and summon a mini boss i'm not going to show you where these skull piles are because they are absolutely everywhere uh, there is like a couple minutes cooldown for each of these but it, it doesn't matter you can just go to wherever there's a, there's a bunch of these skull piles in this uh, zone and you need to summon um, the one of the mini bosses. There are four mini bosses, and it's advisable to summon one at a time because they will drop a green, so uncommon item. And once you collect all of these four, you can go back to the quest giver and hand hand it in, and you will get an item to summon Tarok himself. Now these mini bosses give 100 reputation each and it's really really good. Let's talk about uh, group farming. So group farming obviously can be really really fast. The very first day I started this I had a some questionable group members that 
basically never waited or never pinged when they were summoning a mini boss, so I lost a couple hundred rep there. Um, there is a sort of etiquette where uh, loot is free for all. You can loot whatever you want, but if you have summoned the mini boss, then you get to have the mini boss's loot, and it's especially important with the again the green mini boss items. First, I farmed this in a five-man group, but uh, today I had... It's actually... You don't need a five-man group to maximize your rep gains. You can maximize your rep gains by just having like two or three people. And uh, this is because... Uh, really what caps this whole rep gain process is the fact that you can only summon Tarok... Um, four times an hour, so every 15 minutes is when the bone pile respawns. Um, Tarok is the cap. And um, there's only so many of these birds mobs around that you can farm. Um, what you want to do, and this is the etiquette, is go... These are the four miniboss items that you have to end in. Go around, but uh, don't go too far. Be on the same minimap as your group members, otherwise you get no rep. Uh, always ping when you are summoning a miniboss, so everyone gets the 100 rep. And... Uh, you can go in to the quest giver, hand, hand in the four mini boss uh, green items, and then you get an item to summon this uh, boss named Tarok. Now the mini bosses are really easy to solo as a level 80, but Tarok is not so easy because it seems pretty easy now. But there is there are different phases to this fight. Once he gets to low health, he becomes He's a paladin because he has divine shield. There's going to be an RP event where the Shatari Skyguard, Nether Ray, cool guys are gonna come and drop a flare, and then at the flare they will um, they will f throw like this flame thing, and then it it drops the shield of the boss. I was a massive noob here in this first couple of fights. I let my pet die, and I didn't know that at this point the boss doesn't damage you much and you need to guide him to the flare and it takes a while as you can see it's like 20 30 seconds from the point that he shields until again there's the flare and then they're gonna drop the flame there so you want to lead the boss there soon they're gonna drop the blue flame as well takes a long time right and then the blue flame not instantly but it will take off and i use my kill shot too early right it will drop this uh, shield and the boss starts dealing 3000 damage to you each hit he does 3000 damage uh, and i'm wearing mail right because i'm a hunter it's quite a lot don't get hit here are some of my really scuffed runs until I realized I could probably manage it better and not let my pet die, bring the pet back, retake aggro, etc. However, what's really interesting is that you can actually burst the boss down before he casts his uh, shield. So you can entirely skip this phase. Um, you really don't want to die here because you've already consumed the items. The formula boss items, obviously you turn it in uh, into the item that summons Tarok, you will just lose it. And then you will not gain the rep, and uh, it sucks, right? So lead him to the blue flame, drop the shield, and then get the fuck away. As you can see, my pet is dying. On the left side, he... Just like five or six sh uh, shots my pet. A couple of better attempts. Um, running around with aspect of the pack. Um, he does summon Shadow Bolt uh, Volley. So if you're a hunter and you're doing this, you need to swap back, otherwise you're going to get dazed. I had a couple of attempts, even solo attempts, where I could uh, burst him. Uh, without him incurring the shield. But um, if you're in a group, it's probably very easy. Even in a group, even in a 5 group, we had the fucking shield face so many times. It's a little bit random if you can burst him or not. I had um, a two-man group that was really, really fast. Um, the Wowhead guide says that you can basically reach like 2,000 reputation per hour with this, which is not, it's not even close. So 
if you summon Tarok, and it's entirely possible to summon him solo four times an hour. Because you can just farm that much in an hour. Um, each time you kill Tarok, that's 500 XP, so 2000 XP right there. At that point, you've probably killed four, four of the mini bosses four times, right? So 16. That's another 1600 rep, 1600. So we're already at 3600. You've also handed in a couple of the quests and killed a bunch of these uh, mobs. Um, even in a two man group, we had like 4k rep per, per 4k rep in half an hour. Right, so 8k rep an hour, which is really, really good. So yeah, it's not 2,000 reputation per hour maximum. It's probably like 8,000 or even more, to be honest. Um, going back to the group etiquette, it's probably best. If you're in a two-man group, some one person can go up to the trees and one person can go down, maybe. Uh, try to stick together, because you're going to kill too many mobs anyways. There were times when this place was flooded with um, players. I play on a high populated server. But uh, a lot of the times I was completely alone as well. So it's a very hit and miss. And again, you're gonna get so many shadow dusts anyways that... It's also a good way to um, grind the rep. You're gonna get a lot of your rep from this way. A small chunk, probably the smallest chunk is just killing the... Um, non-elite enemies. A uh, big chunk is these quests, actually. After that, it's probably Tarok. Um, and then the mini-bosses, if you're in a group. You will start with uh, by being neutral uh, when you pick up the quest in Shatruff. But you can quickly get to Exalted. Again, it took me, like... I did the Ogrila quest. I shouldn't have. Um... But it's probably going to take you like 10 to 12 hours. And uh, I have not decided which color to pick. Which color would you pick? Let me know in the comments below. Cool. Thanks for watching. See ya. Scrub, scribe.